Today's lesson is on the basics of trigonometry. So I'm just going to be working with trig in a right angle triangle using sine, cos and tan, your three trig ratios. Now, up until this point, working in a right angle triangle, we've worked with the theorem of Pythagoras and the theorem of Pythagoras was used to determine one of the lengths of the sides of a triangle. So we have three sides of a triangle and using Pythagoras, we would be able to be given two sides of that triangle and we would therefore be able to calculate the third side. So whether we're given the two short sides and asked to calculate the hypotenuse or given the hypotenuse and one of the shorter sides to calculate the other short side. However, what if we're not given the sides of the triangle or both of the sides of the triangle and asked to calculate the third side? That's where trig comes in. Because with trig, with our three ratios, now we incorporate angles into our calculations. So now what we need is we need an angle and a side to calculate the length of the other side. And that's what we're going to do today with our side, cos and tan. For sine, cos and tan, we need to know a little rhyme to be able to know which side we're talking about. And that rhyme goes as follows. Some old hens cackle and howl till old age. So some old hens, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cackle and howl, cos is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Till old age, tan is opposite over adjacent. Now, what on earth am I talking about, about opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse? Let's get into labeling our triangle. If we look at this right angle triangle, we have triangle ABC. So the first thing that I want to just recap is that vertex A, the side opposite vertex A could be a baby A. We have vertex B and the side opposite vertex B could be baby B. And then we have vertex C and the side opposite vertex C is baby C. So that's one thing that we need to note is how to label our triangle with the small letters. So that means that if I look at my hypotenuse, I could label that hypotenuse as line AC or as just the lowercase b. So now we have triangle ABC and I want to know what these sides are in relation to this angle that is given to us over here as theta. So if I'm looking at the angle theta or the angle at C, then I know that the hypotenuse always remains the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle and the hypotenuse is the longer side of the triangle. Now, the side that is touching or closest to the theta is called my adjacent side. And then we have the side opposite theta or opposite the angle that I'm looking at and that is my opposite. So being able to identify the sides in relation to the angle is important so that we're able to use our trig ratios and you'll see they come up on the screen now. So we have sine, some old hen, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. Cackle and howl, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Till old age is opposite over adjacent. So tan is opposite over adjacent. And you can see that I've labeled the triangle as it is. If we look at our first example, the first thing that we're going to do with trig, when we're identifying or calculating an unknown, we need to ask ourselves, what do we have? And what are they asking us to get, right? What do we have? What do we need? So we have this angle 40, we have this 20, and we have this x. So I want to see what I have in relation to this angle. So if my angle is 40, I can see that I have line AB or that x is opposite to that 40 degrees. All right. Now, I'm not going to say that the 20 is adjacent because if I look at the right angle, the 20 is opposite the right angle, which means that the 20 is the hypotenuse. So now I need to quickly decide which trig ratio I'm going to use. So I have some old hens, cackle and howl till old age. So those are my three trig ratios and I'm going to identify which one I'm going to use here. So I have the opposite. So that means that it could either be sine or it could be tan. And then I have the hypotenuse. So that means that I'm going to be using 
sine because I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my formula. So sine theta or the theta that I'm talking about here is sine angle C. So sine of angle C is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what is the opposite? The opposite in this question is line AB over the hypotenuse, which is line AC. So now I can substitute my information into this formula. So I have sine angle C is 40. So sine of 40 degrees is equal to AB's value in the diagram is X over AC's value, which is 20. Now I want to solve for this X, which means that I need to get rid of the denominator of 20. So in order to get rid of the denominator of 20, it's being divided by 20, which means that to get rid of it, I'm going to times both sides by 20. So now I'm going to have 20 times sine 40 on the left equal to x over 20 times 20 is just going to give me x. So therefore, I'll be able to get a value of x. I type into my calculator 20 times sine 40 and I'm going to get 12.86. And then I just look at my unit on my diagram. My unit is centimeters. X is a length, 12.86 centimeters. Now I'd like you to quickly pause the video and quickly attempt this your turn question by yourself. All right, now that you've attempted it, I want to quickly just go over it. So if we have triangle ABC, we look at what we have and what we need. So we've given the 50, the 35, and the X. Now I'm going to determine what everything is in relation to the 50. So if I look at the X, the X is opposite the 50. And the 35 is not adjacent, it's the hypotenuse. So then if I think about it, I have some old hens, cackle and howl till old age. So now I'm going to look and I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to use sine. So sine of angle C is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is AB over the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is AC. So that means that the sine of angle C, which is 50 degrees, is equal to the opposite, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is 35. But I want to get the X by itself. So in order to get the X by itself, I'm going to get rid of that divide by 35 by multiplying by 35. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 35. So that means that on the left-hand side, I'm going to have 35 times sine 50 equal to x over 35 times 35 is x. So therefore, when I type 35 times sine 50 into my calculator, I'm going to get 26.81. It's a length, so centimeters. All right, if I look at the next example, I have triangle PQR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what I have and look at what I need. So if I'm looking at what I have, I have a 30 degree there, I have an X and I have a 10 meters. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what everything is in relation to the angle. So I'm going to start by identifying my hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So I have the hypotenuse, X is what I'm looking for. And then the 10 meters is now not opposite the 30 degrees anymore. Now it is adjacent to the 30 degrees. So again, we're going to look based on the angle that we're given, which sides do we have so that we can choose the correct ratio to use. So that's why we're not given anything about PQ in this triangle. So PQ, the information about PQ isn't given. We're not asked to calculate PQ. So we're going to leave PQ out and PQ is the opposite side in relation to the 30 degree angle that we were given. So now I'm going to say some old hens cackle and howl till old age. 
So now based on that, I'm going to determine which of these ratios I'm going to use. So I have the hypotenuse, which means that it could either be sine or cos. However, I'm also given the adjacent side. So that means that for this question, I'm going to use cos. So now I can write out my formula. So the cos of the angle and the angle that we're given here is r. So the cos of angle r is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent in this question is the line qr and that is over the hypotenuse which in this question is pr. So now I can substitute in. So the cos of angle r, r's angle is 30 degrees, is equal to qr which is 10, over PR, which is X. Now the X is in the denominator, but that's not a problem. However, I do want to get the X out of the denominator. So to get the X out of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by X. That way it's going to cancel on the right, but it's going to land up on the left. So now I'm just going to solve this algebraically. So I'm going to have cos 30 times X, which is X times cos 30 degrees equal to 10 over x times x. The x's will cancel, so I'll just be left with 10. But I want the x by itself, and I don't want x times cos 30. So that means that I can therefore divide by cos 30 degrees because I'm given the angle. So I can divide it by cos 30 degrees on both sides. So x will equal the 10 on the right hand side divided by the cos 30 degrees from the left hand side. Now when you type that into your calculator don't forget that when you're putting cos 30 degrees in your denominator of your fraction you need to close your bracket otherwise it's going to give you a math error. All right so now we have therefore x being equal to 10 divided by cos 30 degrees which is 11.5 five meters. All right, you can pause the video quickly so that you can attempt this your turn question. All right, now that you've paused it, here's the answer. All right, next question. I have triangle ABC and I want to determine X. So I'm going to start the same way as what I have been doing. So I'm going to identify what I have. So I have this 40 degrees, 20 centimeters and X. So from the 40 degrees, from this angle of C, I'm given the 20 centimeters, which is next to or adjacent to the 40 degrees. And then I also have this X, which is opposites. So you can see that no information in this particular question has been given regarding the hypotenuse. So now I'm going to say some old hens cackle and howl till old age. Okay, so based on what I'm given, I'm given the adjacent, so that could be cos or tan. But I'm also given the opposite, so that means that I am now working with tan for this question. So I'm going to write out my formula. So tan of the angle, the angle in this case is angle C, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is AB over the adjacent, which is BC. So that means that tan of angle C, which is 40 degrees, is equal to AB, which is X, over BC, which is 20. All right, but I want the X to be by itself, so that means that I'm going to times it by the denominator, which is the 20. I want to get rid of that 20, which means I'm going to times both sides by 20. So that means that I'm going to have 20 times 10, 40 degrees, on the left-hand side, equal to X over 20 times 20, becomes x. So now I'm going to type that into my calculator. So therefore I'm going to have x equal to 20 times 1040 which is 
centimeters. All right, now you can pause the video and you can attempt this question by yourself. Okay, now we're just going to quickly have a look at it. So we have the 40 degrees, 12 centimeters and X. So based on that 40 degrees, what are we given? We can see that we're not given anything about the hypotenuse. We're given AB's length being 12 centimeters and AB is adjacent to that 40 degrees. And we're also given X and X is opposite. So some old hens cackle and howl till old age. Now I look at that and I need to decide what I'm going to be using. So I'm given the adjacent. So the adjacent could either be cos or tan, but I'm also given the opposite side, which means that I'm going to be working with tan. So tan of angle A is equal to the opposite, which is BC, over the adjacent, which is AB. So the tan of angle A, which is 40 degrees, is equal to BC, which is X, over AB, which is 12. But I want the X to be by itself, so that means that I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by 12 so that I isolate the X. But what I do to the one side, I do to the other side. So I'm going to multiply the other side by 12 as well. So I'll have 12 times 10, 40 degrees equal to X. So that means when I type that into my calculator, therefore, that X is equal to 10.07 centimeters. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I do hope that it's helped. Stay tuned for more videos on trigonometry. Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be.